everybody. Good morning, AO. I hope everybody is doing well there. Sorry, my, uh, it says I'm live, but my thing is like spinning. So I don't know if I'm live. Great. If I'm not okay, let me know. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Okay. And all that good stuff and see me. Okay. Um, my name is Shelly Merrill. I am a mentor here in AO, very proud to be here, honored to be here. Um, I have some questions that I'm going to share my perspective on. Um, I own a fire protection company in Ventura, California, and uh, I've been in business since 1989, right out of high school. So um, I actually started as the right-hand person to the previous owner, and then in uh, 2005, I took over the company and we're still here. So anyway, let's get going here. My first question is from Gabriel Suarez. Hi, Gabriel. I hope to see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, looking for advice and tips on introducing onboarding and training an upper leadership position that is being hired as a complete stranger coming from an coming from outside the company. Um, the background is I've always been huge on promotion within the company, but for the first time I feel that there is no one in the business truly capable of filling the higher leadership position that needs to be fulfilled. Uh, this would be the highest position reporting directly to the business owner, which is him. Uh, this person has been working for a similar business for 10 years and seems to be a good candidate, but is a complete outsider to us, and I'm about to bring them in to steer the entire ship. The team will need to trust them, respect them, follow their advice, etc. How do I do this most efficiently from day one of bringing them in? This business is three types of related businesses under one roof operating as one thing. Art gallery, glass blowing studio, and retail smoke shop. I still want to see that glass blowing stuff, Gabriel. I, I keep going to see if you, uh, I keep forgetting to check and see if you've posted any videos of that. I'm always fascinated by it, but anyway. Um, so... Coming from my experience, I actually hired a general manager several years ago, and I thought, great, you know, this guy, um, he had owned a business previously, he had sold it, you know, just didn't really want to own a business, but wanted to be our general manager. Um, I paid him a, a very good salary, and what ended up happening is I ended up taking my eyes off the ball and he almost ran my company into the ground. So um, whenever I hear anything like this, I cringe because I know you got to have a, man, a good manager in order to grow and, um, you know, keep things flowing and all that stuff. Um, but you got to be really, really cautious and keep your eye on all the numbers and um, stay in close contact and whatnot because that just makes me very nervous. But if I were hiring a new one and bringing them in fresh and, you know, nobody knew them, we needed to, to get this going, um, I would actually organize a company lunch. I would, as the owner, I would present a very positive, um, almost like vision statement type of thing to the existing employees. I would then have that person, the candidate, do a presentation um, to the employees and see how that kind of kind of goes. Um, that candidates should present like their background, um, any um, certifications they may have, awards they may have received, numbers of how they've grown a previous company, uh, that kind of information getting right out there during a fun, happy lunch experience would be great. You could have a, a Q&A 
where the employees could ask all kinds of different questions and, um, you know, maybe even do some kind of a team building session after all of that so that they can kind of spend some like quote unquote downtime with them. Um, that would be what I would do in order to bring them in and make them feel comfortable and start developing that respect uh, for that person. Uh, from my experience, I recommend that that person shadow you for several weeks. And then I recommend that you shadow them for several weeks to make sure they are fulfilling your vision of what you want them to do. That's just my recommendation. That's what I did wrong before. And it'll be interesting to see how that goes but i have faith in you i know you'll do a good job you've got you know you've got uh, a really good idea of how you want things to go and i think it'll go pretty smooth so anyway keep us posted on that okay my next question is from corey stevens he asked how can i overcome the fear of starting a conversation with someone his background i'm in network marketing I'm looking to build relationships with people. I am great interacting one-on-one -on -one with people when the conversation is flowing, but when it comes to starting a conversation with a complete stranger, I feel like something's just blocking me. I go through how the conversation will go in my head, and it sounds great, and when it actually comes to start the conversation, I just have this mental block and procrastinate over doing it. What are ways I can overcome this? Um, I can definitely help you with this, Corey, because I used to, to be just like that. Um, <clears throat> there is a fantastic book that I recommend to everybody, and it's called How to Win Fl Friends and Influence People. Um, I think it's by Dale Carnegie. Um, but anyway, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's, it's a classic. Like, if you type it in... Amazon, they have it. You can listen to it on Audible. That is a really great um, tool to use to help break that. Um, it, but one of the things I always kind of think of is what's the worst that can happen? You know, um, if you're asking somebody about them, about what they do, um, they tend to then start giving you information and the more questions you ask of them the more it's on them to keep the conversation flowing if that makes any any sense at all hopefully it does um, but i highly recommend getting that book and checking it out i hope that helps and keep us posted on that um my next question is from rohit gupta um, what are the best or most necessary apps needed for a Shopify store? Uh, the background is we just created our online store with Shopify and realized there's a lot of apps. Not sure which ones are most needed to have um, for a successful business. I'm a service industry. I don't produce product and sell product, so I have no idea how Shopify works. But I do know that several people on here do know how to do that. And they are who I would go to if I had the same question and was, you know, selling a product, which I may someday. Um, I would recommend getting that same question answered by Joel Gandara, Dan Abate, or from Sean. They all know how Shopify works and the, the different apps to use and whatnot. But... I am not the person to give you advice on that. I'm sorry. Okay, my next question is Martina. I am not sure how to pronounce your last name, so I apologize if I butcher this, but Verinska? Martina Verinska. Hopefully that's close enough. You know who you are. Um, the question is, what sort of strategy do I have to do to achieve my target for this month to reach 2,500 points? It's a last-minute goal. 
The business description is, I'm in Herbalife, marketing, and personal training industry all online. This month, my goal is to get over even better, better over 2,500 points, which seems like a mission ATM. I've uh, been messaging people, adding on social media, Facebook, and Instagram, but not having much luck. I am determined, but how else efficiently to attract and sell my nutrition programs? Thank you for your help. Um, again, I'm, I'm not really in this kind of market, so I'm definitely not an expert. Um, Jerry Morton, who's a mentor in here, could could definitely answer this question and give you more information. But if I were in this situation and I was looking for how to find and attract more people, um, even though it's on Facebook, I would be looking at the various Facebook groups. Um, since it's health and wellness, that market's probably pretty saturated. Um, but you could look at other groups like food, um, baking groups, um, any, any type of, uh, I don't know, even like entertainment might be a good set of groups to start looking at in those Facebook groups. Um, I'm curious too, like if you already have a website set up and if, if you might be able to get some coaching on the click funnels and that that type of stuff but again I'm I don't sell products so I'm not quite sure and I'm not even sure where these points come from as far as if that's how Herbalife rates you or how you make your commissions or or whatnot but if I were looking for these additional people I would definitely be looking into the Facebook groups, not just adding the people, but getting into the group where there's thousands of other people there that are potential clients. I hope that helps. I'm sorry. I'm not good on that one. Um, my next question is another question from Corey Stevens. Uh, when do you know if it's the right time to approach your prospect with your product or opportunity? The background. I am an independent distributor for a global health and wellness company. It's network marketing. After establishing a relationship with the prospect and building rapport with them, how will you know when it's the right time to approach them with your opportunity or product? How will you go about approaching them with what you have to offer? Um, well, I do think a lot of this develops over time. You, you develop a gut instinct on when is the best time to approach somebody as opposed to when not is a good time. Um, but if I were looking for this information, I would definitely be going back to the portal and going through Tom's, Tom Black's uh, Pro Code Sales uh, because that's where you're going to get this kind of information is right there in the portal. I know he's got scripts. Um, so if he were to coach you, he would help you uh, write out scripts and, and even going so far as to letting you know like what somebody could say to turn you down and how to turn that around into a sale. So I would, if I were you, I would definitely... Um, use the res the resources in the portal and check out Tom's Pro Code Sales. And if that doesn't work, I'd actually hire him as coach. So there you go. Um, next question is from Matthew Phipps. How do you approach a business partner when your responsibilities have become more than the original agreement for a percentage in the company? The background is our company sells a bike product that creates sparks as you wheelie. I was invited to start this business and lead the product development for a 12% stake in the company. Now, my business partner has me doing website design, graphic design, sales portals, customer support, and shipping along with designing our next round of products. 
how do I approach the conversation that this was not in the original agreement of my responsibilities for 12% of the business? And what is an appropriate compensation to ask for? Or is it best to be happy with my percentage and do everything I can to make the business a, a success? Um, well, if I was in this situation, I would definitely um, look at it as it's better to own 12% of a $10 million company than 12% of a million dollar company. And so it's in your own best interest for that company to do well, because the better the company does, the more you're going to make. You signed on at 12%. You know, you, um, I don't know where that number came from. I don't know what your negotiations were. Um, but I'm curious if, if your actual, you mentioned uh, agreement of my responsibilities. You mentioned that. So I'm curious if your responsibilities were written down in the operating agreement. That would be a good thing to go back and look for if, I mean, it's, it says that you were brought in to do the product development. Is the product development done? Um, all those other things that that person is asking you to do, could you outsource those things and then let the company pay that fee to outsource that stuff? Like why, I'm not sure why that has become your responsibility unless you are possibly saying yes when you really want to say no, which that sometimes happens too. Um, but is the product development done? And then from that point, are you supposed to continue developing new products, like constantly doing research and development, that kind of stuff? Um, it would possibly be helpful to get uh, your responsibilities or the things that you've taken on to do now, get it onto an Excel spreadsheet and assign a value to it. And then possibly, yeah, um, you can, Start subbing it out so that you're not doing it all. Okay, so my next question is another question from Martina Grinska. Hi, honey. I see you there. I hope you're doing well. Okay, so Martina, where do I look for new clients other than Facebook and Instagram? And how do I maintain a flow of new clients every month? Um, as a personal trainer online, my clients come and go. I need to make sure that I have consistency in my work and cash flow as my clients often go on holidays or have personal reasons, especially during COVID. That's probably been a huge one for you. Um, where and how do I get new clients and how do I maintain mainly maintain them since I only charge my clients pay as go. Um, if I was, uh, again, I'm going to, I'm going to refer back to Tom Black's pro code sales in the portal in the resources, um, because that is a great tool to use to develop your processes for finding those new customers. Um, also, the Chamber of Commerce events in your city or the surrounding cities are always a good, um, a good source of new people and stuff that you haven't seen before. The more often you go to those events, um, people will start to recognize you. You'll start to develop a certain rapport. Um, there's always new people coming and going. I, I would definitely look into what e what other city events might be going on in your city or surrounding cities, depending on where you're at, 
I have about five cities within a 20 mile radius here that it's just an endless supply of people you can meet and talk to and, you know, learn about their businesses and stuff. So definitely do that. Um, I do believe in Tom Black's Pro Code Sales. He does talk about developing those call lists and then making a certain number of calls every day. And so it, definitely go back and, and do some work in that Pro Code Sales for sure. Um, or book a, a call with him. That would be a good idea as well. Um, there might even be a way that you could uh, set up a little system where you get, you give somebody some kind of some some freebie, something a gift card or something for uh, for referrals. You know, get your current uh, customer base referring you as well, and give them an incentive to do that. That's what I would do. So good luck on that one. Okay, my next question is Ricardo Delgado. Should my business have an employee handbook or operations manual? The background is I have a barbershop and I'm looking to build the brand behind it. Sorry, there was an extra word there. It threw me off. Um, I want I want my business to be able to scale in the most in the smoothest way possible. That way I can get investors interested. Uh, my answer to your question on if you should have an employee handbook or operations manual is yes, you need to have both. I highly recommend having an employee handbook before you ever even hire your very first employee, but I understand that you're already in business and all that. I, I would, if I were you, I would find a local human resources consultant and get working on that right away. Um, every, um, every state has their own human resource laws and, you know, stuff that you really need to uh, know about and make sure are covered in the handbook. And that is really important because not having handbooks in place is a quick way to get sued. Um, so yeah, definitely. As far as uh, operations manual, um, Sean a while back had, had gotten us involved with a company called Trainual. It's T-R-A-I-N-U-A-L, Trainual. And we get a discount if we sign on and, and become a member with them. But it's a great platform for all of your um, standard operating procedures, your manuals. Um, when you're doing an operations manual, I'm a big fan of doing training videos so that you can actually show the person how you want something done. And that makes it very clear. It takes away any question. It takes away... Um, how people interpret the written word differently. And you can have all that in your trainual account ready to go for anybody new that you hire. And so, yes, I definitely, 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 you need to have an employee handbook for sure. Um, and, and that would be the number one priority for me. And my second priority would be getting that operations manual going. A lot of people call them uh, SOPs. That stands for Standard Operating Procedures. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, um, I highly recommend getting that in place as quickly as possible and cover all the laws. Just make sure make sure that is is definitely in your repertoire of stuff here. Okay, so my next question is for AJ Couts. How do you overcome the fear of disappointing people? The background is I constantly struggle with the balance of standing up for the best interest of my business and family versus telling people things that I'm afraid will disappoint them. What tactics mindset, strategies, etc. do you use to help yourself 
help yourself say what truly needs to be said and accept whatever the outcome is. Thanks. I have that same problem, uh, so I can definitely relate to that. Um, what I have found in my life is that being a people pleaser, it gets you nowhere. It, it really can be draining and people pleasers tend to be walked on and stepped on and taken advantage of and stolen from and all kinds of things. And I, and I say this from experience. Um, what I always try to re remind myself of is that we can't get through life without disappointing someone. Um, nobody is going to be happy with you 100% of the time. And that's just life. That's anytime you have two human beings anywhere. Um, it's just part, part of it. So daily affirmations are really helpful. I have certain things that I say to myself out loud, but to myself when I'm alone um, all day long that... You know, a big one I use is abundance. You know, I will stop and just say the word abundance or grateful or, you know, whatever the case may be. You can have a full sentence that you say to yourself, but it's it's kind of taking away that, that negative self-talk and replacing it with positive self-talk. So um, those affirmations can start out being actually saying it out loud and as you get used to doing those then you will start just kind of they'll just stick in the back of your head and replace your negative thoughts with those um another thing is i often think about a time um when i was disappointed by somebody and how did they react to me you know there's a lot of people that will disappoint you and not give a shit you know it, it it is what it is um so I kind of think about that um Sharon Lecter talks a lot about putting on the cone of protection where you know you just you have this like visualize this actual cone protecting you and you you just kind of let this stuff the disappointments of other people just kind of fall off. You've got to do what's best for you because nobody else is going to do what's best for you. Um, and another thing too, if, if you're like me, I used to think things all the way around. So telling myself, you know, I really tried hard to not disappoint this person. I thought this situation around from every direction. This is the outcome. It is what it is. It wasn't intentional. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. So, you know, it is what it is. Not everybody's going to feel like they get a fair deal. Um, another way that, that really works well is getting people, get, Asking questions to those people that are going to be disappointed. I'm trying to figure out how to word this best. You ask them questions that would then get them to come up with the same conclusion that you came up with. And then they kind of actually are more understanding about how how something may not go their way, but they don't really have to, they don't have to dwell on it or be upset about it or whatever. It just is how it is. Um, Trey Gowdy came out with a really great book about asking questions. And if you were to go on Amazon and type in Trey Gowdy, I'm sure you could find it. But um, I enjoy his Audible just because I love his, his accent. <laughs> Um, but asking questions and getting that person to come to the same conclusion you came to or possibly hearing how there might be something in there that could could make could be an idea that it would be more beneficial to both of you and you wouldn't have to disappoint them like you just never know. Um, 
Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, I got all of my questions answered. I don't see any more questions here. Um, again, honey. Oh, hi, Shirley. I see you there, too. Um, hopefully, y'all are having a good day. I hope some of this perspective helped. And I will see you soon.